Boating Local traveled to Pembroke, Massachusetts to witness the cooperative efforts of the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries, members of the North South Rivers Watershed Association, recreational fishermen, and other environmentally concerned citizens as they pitched in to move thousands of blueback herring that were blocked from reaching their freshwater spawning grounds. The herring stacked up below the dam at Upper Mill Pond, also known as Glover Mill Pond, travel from Cape Cod Bay into the North River, then up through a system of bogs and into tiny shallow herring brook, a distance of over 12 miles. Fish make this odyssey each year, as they have since the glaciers retreated some 12,000 years ago. The Glover Mill Dam is representative of many small and poorly maintained dams in New England that are in desperate need of repair. While a new fish ladder is scheduled to be installed this summer, this year's herring would once again need to be removed from the river by hand and shuttled by truck to their spawning grounds in Oldham Pond. At 10.30, the volunteers began herding the herring upriver to concentrate them in the section of the river immediately below the dam. At this point, other volunteers set a seine net behind them to prevent any fish from escaping downstream. When everyone was in position, the herring were scooped up in large nets and passed by hand to the tanker truck at the top of the dam. Between truck runs, we caught up with Watershed Alliance Executive Director Samantha Woods. How many, um, how many herring are you rescuing here, do you think? They just moved 3,000. That was what we just picked up. Um, the time before, we did 4,300. He's coming back, so we'll do another 3,000 maybe. Right. So that's about 10. So um, we're you know, keeping the run alive. There's probably you know, several tens of thousands of others that we can't get. They, there is some habitat downstream that they can access but we want to keep the population strong here and they will return to their natal spawning ground so you want to get them to uh, so that the babies will come back sure. for three years to this place. How about in terms of the herring after they're done spawning? Do they have any trouble issues with getting out of their no. upstream spawning areas? No, it's pretty uh, easy. These dams aren't that big, um, mostly used for bog, cranberry bog diversion. Um, this one's a little bit of a jump but uh, they'll be okay, they can make it back out. They're pretty hardy. They are actually fairly, <laughs> fairly hardy. Um, and the, you know, this run um, actually was rejuvenated about a decade ago, they restocked it. And all of these fish we see now are from that stocking effort. Really? They put like 3,000 in and now we've got tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Well, so. it's, it's a shame that they can't all get up there and it procreate, is. It you is. know. It is, but it, it also is an opportunity to educate people sure. about um, this particular species, herring, are really, uh, their populations have plummeted. They're a species of concern, which is sort of one step removed from endangered. Um, they not only have trouble accessing their spawning grounds because of dams and fish ladders that may or may not work, or no fish ladder at all. Um, one of the things the Watershed Association is trying to do is to try to restore uh, these runs and try to um, either, if a fish ladder is necessary, try to advocate to get that done. Uh, or, if possible, remove the dam, because that's really the, the ideal situation. You don't have to keep paying to fix a fish ladder or maintaining it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, that's not possible in every case. Right. Um, but they also suffer uh, quite a bit of mortality out to sea. They're getting picked up by trawls out to sea, and there's quite a bit of effort undergoing right now to try to monitor and uh, ameliorate that situation uh, so that we don't have basically the herring go the way of the salmon, which is possible, and they're very important. They are the basic of the food chain. If you like striped bass, 
This is wood striped bass eat if you like blue fish. I mean, this is the little fish that all the other things like to kind of chase in. <laughs> yes, herring have it pretty tough, but at least these fish were spared the last five miles of their spawning run to Oldham Pond. Next year might be a different story. Well, I'm here at Olden Pond with uh, Ed Clark and Lou Carmo. They're with the Division of Marine Fisheries, Massachusetts Di Division of Marine Fisheries, and we just unloaded a bunch of herring. Boy, it's a lot easier to unload them than it is to load them, right, Lou? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. How many, how many herring do you think we just, uh, you guys just dumped in here? Uh, 2,500 on this trip and 3,000 on the first trip this morning. Yeah, and this is your, and this is your second day of doing this for this particular run. It's like 4,300 fish last time. Yep. So we're close to 10,000 fish. Right? Yeah, and unfortunately you had to leave a lot of them down there that wanted to get up. Yeah, quite a few more, yes. Yeah. And now you guys you guys do this for other runs as well throughout the throughout the state and there there are apparently there there, there are quite a few that, that need this help. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's just me and Ed. We take care of the whole entire state from New Hampshire all the way down to Rhode Island. And, oh, really? Yeah. And we, we get a lot done, believe it or not, with you guys. But. Yeah. Well, you guys are, are real herring heroes. <laughs> but thanks a lot for letting, uh, let, letting us tag along. Well, thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it, Lou. Ed, thank keep you. up the good work. We'll uh, keep tabs on you guys and the herring restoration efforts in the state. I'm Tom Richardson for Voting Local. Thanks for watching.